And so is that what we mean then by prebiotic chemistry? So those building blocks that existed before even the start of this uh, RNA uh, strand? And how old are we talking here on, on Earth? So, uh, you know, the Earth is supposed to be close to 4.85 billion years old, roughly, you know, give or take 4.5. And then the question is, you know, when the Earth was an inhospitable place at the very, very beginning, the question was what sort of chemistries could have survived or what sort of processes could have gone on and survived. And is that the same as astrobiology? Because I've seen your name associated with that term as well. So astrobiology is is taking it and not limiting it to our Earth, but then just taking it and expanding it throughout the universe. So the NASA Astrobiology Program you know, has a very broad goal of trying to find out how life arose, how life evolved, and how life survives, not only in the context of our own single data point that we know in the universe called Earth, but how we can also use it to search for life, clues of life, biosignatures of life, um, whether life could have existed on a planet or did exist on a planet and go extinct, you know, and it becomes more and more relevant with the discovery of so many exoplanets that are happening with James Webb and other telescopes that are being, you know, these beautiful images come, they are very mesmerizing. And, you know, it really calls for your, you know, deep questions, are we alone? You know, that's the, that's the question that they are trying to answer. You said, uh, was it the, a lot of these amino acids and some other building blocks are actually found uh, in meteorites in yeah. the solar system. That's, That's right. So, I mean, is that is that indication of life or is that just the uh, presence of building blocks? For me, what it just says is the chemistry is universal. The chemistry is universal, but life is a different question for me. That's at, at a much higher level in terms of using that as a proxy for life. And that is one of the big questions that NASA is interested in, is how do we search for life when we know such abiotic chemistry that happens on the meteorite also gives us biological building blocks. What do you think of uh, this search for extraterrestrial life? Do you think we have made uh, any progress? What, do you think it exists? What are your, what's your take? So there are very serious discussions. You know, what are the implications? You know, the question is always framed in a very big, appealing manner to the general society, the layperson, are we alone? You know, so that is a gripping question, you know, right from, you know, the famous A.G. Wells novel about Martians attacking us to a lot of invoking a lot of other things. One of the things that really fascinates me is um, Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk. You know, the, the, I always go back to that and the type of life forms that Spock has to deal with, you know, which is in the shape of a blob based on silicon, you know, and the silicon and those kind of things. So. It's a, it's a very hard answer to say yes or no, definitively. So you always end, end up in this grayish maybe based on the Drake you know, equation type of approach where you say the probability of having you know, so many worlds and so many universes and so many exoplanets, what is the chance that you will not find life on at least one of them, right? Now, that is a very, very um, optimistic way of thinking about it. But it is, it is also, in a way, um, philosophical. You know, there is this very famous Eastern philosophical mind game that people play. And, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and you're not there to hear it, do you, hear, you know, does it make a sound? Yeah. So the question is, even if there is life out there on a planet, exoplanet, that we can't possibly in our lifetime or even in the Earth's lifetime, reach that and get back the information that there is life. Is there, you know, no life on that planet? So I, it's, a, it's a very difficult, it's a struggle. It's a struggle in terms of trying to answer it, answering it definitively. Um, it's something like the UFOs, if you will, right? You know, we have seen these images and we have, you know, all these theories about, you know, what it should be, what it could have been, who is hiding what, what are they hiding where and things like that but there is no definitive even with the ufos with the pictures we are not able to come to a definitive conclusion so let alone about um, an, a life that might exist on an exoplanet far far away yeah i'm so glad you brought that up i did want to get your take because 
you know, in, in even just the past three to five years, we've had all these, uh, you know, Navy pilots coming out yeah. and showing the radar yeah. footage. We've got congressional reports sort of admitting to government programs and these unidentified uh, aerial phenomena, I think they call them now. So, I mean, what what do you think about that whole that whole scene? I think it's actually very good for Hollywood because they can make nice movies out of it. You know, they, we are always fascinated by this government hiding things or things like that, right? Those are kind of things um, that, you know, gives you pause. But, you know, it is, you know, to come back to a real scientific approach to that, you know, when I, you know, for example, there are some results that, you know, my colleagues come and show me saying, look, you know, I got the spectra or I got this result. And then, you know, sometimes we are really excited and we go, you know, far beyond, uh, you know, in terms of what we can interpret and come back. And then the next day, the you know, the poster come back, saying, ah, sorry, I can't reproduce it. It's gone. So, you know, so I try to place these kind of UFO sightings and interpretations in those kind of categories where you need to have enough reproducible data and enough, you know, um, uh, repeatability in terms of trying to say, okay, this has happened so many end times and these are the things that corroborated, then I can come to a conclusion. But otherwise, it just, you know, belongs to the sensational uh, field, you know, where you get excited for one day and then comes back to ground reality.